Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Razabani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me, a very fresh looking Dave Cowell on this Sunday afternoon. Dave, you're right? You're fresh looking, not, I don't know about a fresh feeling. <laughs> but isn't it about the look? Isn't it about the perception? Well, I suppose, fair enough. When, when he gets 45, it's more about how you feel, mate. <laughs> um, Terence Crawford, Kel Brook, uh, I was getting excited because I was like 3 a.m., hopefully nice and early, not a 5 a.m. fight, but it seemed like it came on about 5.15. Uh, let's just jump straight in. A lot of people talked before the fight to say this was going to be a tough fight, a step too far for yeah. Kel Brook. He posted a picture, I think, on Thursday or Friday, uh, looking absolutely ripped and shredded. Um, I remember speaking to his nutritionist earlier in the week, and he said, this is the best that Kel has made 147. He's been training for months, not eight or 12 weeks, but many months. Um, how did you assess uh, the first, well, the four rounds of the fight? Um, I think the problem is, is sometimes what we do is, is we buy into our fighter looks on the scales a bit too much. Um, you know, uh, We've all said all along, 147 Kel, for Kel. It's one thing a fighter making a weight. Yes, once once you, you know, a nutritionist and everything, they do a great job and everything, but getting a guy on the scales and being there is one thing, but actually him performing once once he's once he's come down to that weight, you know, 24 hours, 30 hours or whatever it is after, then performing at the weight, what does it what does it take away from him? You know, um, and and there's been countless countless fights where you see a fighter that's you know big for the weight or whatever, and he and he, he gets himself down to that weight, and the punch resistance isn't there. They just they're just not quite the same fighter, and it gets this gets worse as you get older. And Kel's been at one four seven for a long long time. But having said that, that's you know that's because you mentioned the weight to me. That's you know that's regardless. We always knew that Terence Crawford was going to be a very very tough ass for Kel, but Props to him for going out there and chasing the big fights. You know, Golovkin, you spent, you called for that. Three of the, the biggest names that we've, we've, we've got in boxing or we've had in boxing for a while. Um, and he's faced him. Um, and, you know, obviously, when, when you're fighting the pound for pounders like your Crawfords, it's so hard because you have to be concentrated and it has to be, everything has to be perfect for every split second of the fight because they only need to just see that one opening and they take it and, and they change the fight. And that's the difference with these guys that are just at that elite, super elite level, you know? Um, there's a reason why those guys do something and, and on a consistent basis. The reason why they're at that sort of level, because if you look at me in the gym, so, you know, I've, I've spoke to, um, I've seen myself and I've, I've spoke to other fighters where they've gone and they've, they've trained or they've sparred or they've watched sparring with, with these fighters, elite level fighters or whatever. And you watch them and think, well, in the gym and they watch them in the sea and I think, well, it's not like I were expecting more, but then you see what they do on fight night and those, it's those fine margins of, you know, Kel, Kel did well. We, Crawford always gets off to a slow start. You know, that's no surprise. You know, we were talking in the gym and, yeah, we was, you know, a lot of Crawford's fights, even Lomachenko fights, for the first four or five rounds, the close fights, you know, barring the Lopez fight, but the, first, the close fights and, and the other guy feels like they're in it, but they're having to do so much to stay in it. And while the elite fighter, the pound for pound fighter, is figuring them out, seeing what they do, do well, to take that away, seeing what mistakes they make, and then adjust themselves to get themselves in that position. And then, you know, especially Crawford, so many of his fights, the first six rounds or so, are very well, you know, well matched competitive fights. And then you see him go up in the, uh, another gear when, when he feels comfortable. And that's what happened last night. You know, Kel got off, got off to a good start. We all know that Kel's timing is fantastic, you know. Um, and he got off to a good start. I had him, I had him winning the first two, then Crawford for me, the th round three. Um, and then it just ended, just boom, just quick. You know, it, it's, that's, that's the level that you're at, and that's the problem. You know, it can just 
unravel so quick at that level. Talk about that punch that Crawford landed that initially wobbled. It didn't seem like the biggest yeah, but, So I, I see that. I've, I've heard this from a lot of people saying, you know, oh, it was just a jab, oh, and, and then Slate and Kettle, it's just a jab. It's not just a jab. You look at the angle that he throws that shot and he just drops, he drops it in. You know, when he, he can box South or Orthodox, but I believe his right hand is his, 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 his real power shot. So he's gone to that, that, that side and, and he's got the found that angle to, as Kell's moving onto the shot, he's chopped it on. So he's managed to get a lot of leverage into that shot, you know, and that's a good shot. It was a, it was a, you know, it unhinged him completely. And yes, like I said, when, when you look at, you get on the scales and everybody starts whooping and saying you look fantastic on scales and things like that. Scales mean shit when it comes down to actual performing. And we've seen it so many times. People buy into this thing about, because the way that somebody looks on a set of scales, that is not fighting. You know, Crawford's an old school fighter. He's a throwback kind of fighter. And, um, you know, when I was wa watching the face off after the weigh-in, you know, myself and Richard Towers, we were talking about it. Um, the lads in the gym with Jordan up in the run, we were talking about it. You know, Kel's speaking and Kel, you know, he, he, he's getting into this back and forth. And he was talking about his size and talking about it. Crawford's, Crawford's not trying to be a bad man. He's not trying to intimidate. He's just being what he is. You know, he's, he's from that kind of background that, you know, he's, he's, he is rough and, and been through a lot of stuff like that. Um, and he is used to, you know, these tough, tough fights, tough spars, and, and it's got that sort of mentality. And it goes toward being that kind of fighter that he is and, and the level that he is. And he was just, he wasn't interested in the size. You know, Kel, they're all talking about the size, the size, the size. It's, it's different when, the, the, you know, you see Lo, uh, Lopez and Lomachenko. Lopez is an elite little fighter as well, a very, very good fighter as well. So to give away size and strength and things like that and freshness as well, against somebody else that's on that same sort of level, that's when it's very, very hard to do. But when you are an elite fighter and you're fighting a guy that, that hasn't, you know, hasn't proven himself to be on that level yet, you know, Kel, Kel's always had great potential, but, you know, he, he, you can't put him on that same sort of pedestal as those elite guys, not, especially not at this, this stage of his career. So then the size and, and, and the strength and what have you, they know, those guys know how to take that away. They know how to deal with that, you know. Um, and, and that's what it proved. And it was just, it was just blinking an eye. It just, that's it. The fight, the fight ended. We know Dominic Ingle uh, wasn't in his corner. We know, obviously, Eddie Hearn uh, wasn't promoting the event. Um, question now is, where does Kel go next? Because a lot of people were saying before the fight, <laughs> He's left Eddie out and Dom out because he wants to cash in and make as much money as we can. Maybe true, maybe not true. We just don't know. Uh, we know Eddie and Dom have said their part of it. Um, where does he go? Or is this the last time we see Kill? Um, hey, listen, it's, it's, it's none of my business to tell somebody to finish. But I, I remember Kel from day one when he walked into the gym. You know, I, I remember him as, as that little kid. Um, I've watched him grow up. You know, he's become a, he's become a dad. You know, he's, he's, he's a... He's, he's, done great for himself he's secured his family's future and everything and um, he doesn't need boxing for the finances of it you know if he's if he's after the glory and things like that then i would i would say to him my own opinion is it's maybe now's the time to walk away because you know he's he's gone at the at the elite level you know you can say whatever you want but his losses were at the elite level you know Golovkin, Spence, and and um, and Crawford. There's no shame in that. If he was to walk away from the sport, having done what he'd done, he'd beat Sean Porter. You know, he's been a world champion, he's made a lot of money, like I said. Um, there's no shame in that. And I just think that when when you're a fighter that uh, doesn't get hit a lot and, and relies on your reflexes and speed and sharpness and, and things like that, you know, um, when things start to unravel in that sort of sense and you start to get tagged and you know, it's time to get out. And I just think at this stage of his career, the inactivity, the, everything that's going off, um, I think it's a tough ask for him to come back. And, and also, listen, I, 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 will, I don't care that he looked great on the scales. I will always say that he, he should have, you know, 
he's a big kid. He's a big, big kid at that weight. 147. He should have moved up. He should have moved up before, you know, before. And I, I think after um, after Glockin and going up at that weight, he, he should have gone to 154 uh, then. Um, but it's all in the past. It makes no difference, in my opinion. It, it, it doesn't mean shit. Um, it's just that I, I've always thought, um, and I've always thought 147, Kel going back to 147 was always going to be a tough ask. You know, anybody can drop weight. Anybody can look fantastic on scales. Um, but let's not forget on the scale, you know, it's just, listen, scales are scales. You're not performing on, on scales. Um, and um, I just think for him to, to, to move forward now, if he was to box again, then he has to, he has to jump up. You know, um, he has to go up in the divisions. But is there that hunger and desire there? You know, I, I've had the feeling that he's wanted, he's, he's been inactive and what, because he's been waiting for a big mega fight. You know, like, I mean, Khan's similar sort of personality. They've done all the fights. They've done the, you know, the, the warm-ups, the, the, the whatever. They get motivated. These kind of fighters, when they've been around at the top for so long, takes a lot for them to get motivated and, and perhaps they're just looking for the big fight, big money, the, you know, the challenges. Um, the problem is at this stage of a career is if you're trying to find the fights that match that motivation, if you've got that motivation and you, know, you can only get out of bed for these kind of fights. The problem is, is at this stage of your career, those kind of fights are a little bit beyond your capabilities, I think. Um, so I, I would like to see him, see him walk away, but we'll see, won't I? We'll see. Spencer, uh, I spoke to Spencer Oliver just before I um, dialed in to speak to you and, and Spencer said he'll love to see a Mae Khan Kell Brook. He goes to the fight that, yeah, would have been brilliant five years ago, but I would still pay for it. But you still got people like Liam Smith there, maybe a domestic showdown, a farewell fight? Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, so Khan, I would imagine both of them two guys, if that fight could get made, both of them two guys would be up for that fight because it's personal because of the history and things like that so they would really get up for it but a domestic clash a great domestic clash against Liam Smith Liam Smith would be up for that fight but I think Kel I think it's, it's kind of like I think Amir Khan wouldn't want to get beat by Kel Brook because of it's the domestic thing and he don't mind getting beat by Canelo's and elite level fighters. I kind of get the feeling that Kel's a little bit like that, that he won't want to get beat by Liam Smith. Um, at this stage of the careers, Liam Smith could be an absolute nightmare for Kel Brook. Um, you know, uh, so would he want to take that, that gamble? Whereas a calm fight, it's one of those, isn't it? It's who's who's gonna? Is, yeah. yeah, I'm not excited by that fight anymore because everyone talks about it and it's talked about it for years and years and years. So I don't really give a shit about that fight anymore. But if it was to be signed, don't get me wrong. If it was to be signed and it's done, then I'd kind of be like, yeah, I want to see it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch it. I'd want to see it because I'm final. Oh, they're not at the best though. So you never get that complete answer. And the 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 problem is 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 like. Remember, we talked about Mayweather um, um, uh, Pacquiao for years and years and years. And then I remember when it happened, it was like, nah, it can be like that, you know? Um, but yeah, people watch it, but it's not, a, it's not a Wembley Stadium fight anymore. It's, you know, that, that day's gone. That, that day's done. It's never that kind of fight anymore, but it's still a big fight and it's, it's still a fight that if it finally got done, then people would want to watch because of the followings that they've got. But I'm, you know, I, I kind of, I'm kind of sad that it's never happened. Anyway, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's the peak of them have both gone, and and so it'd be a different fight now to what it would have been in in the heyday. Okay, uh, Dave. Just finally, just want to end on this uh, today. Uh, Dave Allen announced his retirement from. from I've only just seen this. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I've only just seen this. So was that? Like, did he announce it last night or was it today? This morning. I've seen it, I've seen it this morning. Yeah. All right. So uh, he's announced his retirement. Uh, he said he doesn't want to get punched in the face no more. Um, I saw him in great shape, probably best shape I've seen him. Uh, he was supposed to fight on the Usyk Chisora undercard. Yeah. Uh, obviously, fight fell through uh, for other reasons. But uh, yeah, he announced his retirement. Everyone's wished him well. Um, your reaction? Yeah, listen, he, he's, he's a great character, isn't he? And, and he's, he's proven to the ordinary guys out there that are boxing that you can, you know, he, 
you can break into the into the big league as such. You know, he, he, um, he one thing I'll say about Dave from the first time that I see that I ever saw him spar, he's a tough bastard. You know, he would just take shots, come forward and make your work and grind. You know, look to grind his, his sparring partners down, his opponents down, whatever. Um, never turn his back on a fight. You know, he, he, he's uh, he's got big balls, man. And I wish him all the best in in retirement. Um, he uh, when I had Amy Timlin that I managed box on the other uh, the other week. Um, Amy told me that Dave took her under his wing. Um, you know, she's a little bit shy, a bit quiet, and and he took her under uh, a wing. He's a good character and he's a nice kid, and so I wish him all the best. I'm glad that he's walking away from it. I'll be honest with you because. He's one of those guys that needs protection from himself. So he's too tough. He's too, you know, he's too game. Um, so if he's decided he don't want to get punched anymore, which I think might be a lot to do with the fact that now he started coaching kids, that you see that if you, if because coaching what it can do, it can give you that buzz. Not quite the same, but it can give you that buzz um, that perhaps you missed as a fighter or you, you feel that you will miss as a fighter. And I think Dave needs something to to keep his mind on um, and to give him that, you know, that, that motivation and that, you know, focus. And I think coaching, because these kids look up to him that he's working with and he's got such a good relation with him. I think that's given him, it makes you start thinking to yourself, well, actually, there is a path, there is a life after boxing. Because a, a lot of sportsmen, a lot of boxers, um, the, you know, and Dave's been quite open about his, you know, his, his um, things that he, he has to deal with mentally and things. Um, a lot of them, I think, perhaps worry about well, what do I, what do I do when I you know, when I stop boxing? When uh, the the personal side of boxing, where you're meeting people, you meet. It's like this is our social life. We, you know, when you when you live twenty four seven in boxing, you don't actually go out much. Obviously, you don't go out now because of lockdown and shit. But I'm saying, in normal life, you don't actually socialize much apart from with people in the sport when we you know we go away for fight week and things like that you're around whether it's in you know in the hotel whether it's in a dinner uh, uh, restaurant or whatever mm-hmm. bumping into people so so you kind of like miss that when you're not in that and but he's now a coach so he's still gonna have that he's still gonna be around the fight game he's still gonna be around you know his friends at, at match room at sky at, you know up and down the country he's still being around that um so yeah, so it's, it's that maybe I mean I don't know, um, but that may be part of the reason why I thought you know what I have got a path and a and a and a career outside of fighting. I don't need to get punched in. I don't need to keep putting damage on myself. Um, so that, I'm I'm happy for him and and I, and I wish him all the best going forward. No, absolutely. Wish Dave all the very best and success uh, in the future. Dave Cobber, always a pleasure. Thank you for jumping on this afternoon. Yeah. Enjoy your Sunday. Rest, recover, get ready for Monday morning tomorrow. Big week, big week. Got um, back in the gym tomorrow and then we're in the bubble for oh, Hopi Price. Yeah. So we're going to come to Wembley on Tuesday. Let me catch up with you during the week. Dave Colwell for IFL TV. Thank you very much. Yes, mate. See you later. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.